What's going on, gardeners? It's Thursday, March 30th, and it is a gorgeous spring day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. On today's video, I'm going to show you five tips that will guarantee you more potatoes in your vegetable garden. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications, and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom-designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. For some reason, a lot of gardeners do not grow potatoes, and we need to change that because they are one of the easiest things that you can grow in your annual vegetable garden. And on top of that, after harvest, they store for months. So they're a wonderful source of long-term food storage. So this video is going to teach you everything you need to know about growing potatoes. As a point of clarity, this video is going to be about potatoes that we often refer to as white potatoes, even though they come in different colors. Potatoes are part of the nightshade family, which is the same family as tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant. This video has nothing to do with sweet potatoes, which is an entirely different species and part of the morning glory family. So they are actually unrelated. You can grow any potato that is a nightshade as the instructions in this video will suggest. But none of these rules will apply to sweet potatoes because that's an entirely different process. The first tip to grow more potatoes than you ever have before is to make sure you get the timing right. You should plant your potatoes approximately one to two weeks before your last frost date. When we think of growing potatoes, a lot of us think of the country Ireland or the state Idaho. Both are very famous for growing potatoes and they both have something in common. They have fairly short, cooler summers. Yes, I know it can get pretty hot some days in Idaho, but summers there in general are fairly brief. The reason why these places are good for growing potatoes is that potatoes actually thrive in cooler weather. So it is in our best interest to get them in the ground as soon as possible, actually before frosts and freezes stop by about one to two weeks. While potato foliage is damaged by frosts and freezes, because it takes several weeks for the potatoes to sprout and grow roots and then break through the soil because we'll be burying them about six inches deep if we plant them one to two weeks before our last frost date. By the time they actually make green growth and it breaks through the surface, by then your frosts and freezes will be over. Potatoes simply don't like persistent hot weather, so it's very important that we get our potatoes planted in the spring so they can grow throughout the cool season and we harvest them before the really hot weather rolls in in the dead of summer. My second tip is to grow your potatoes in containers. And my favorite containers to grow these in are 20 gallon fabric grow bags. However, any large containers will work. And if you're interested where to buy these, I have them linked down in my Amazon storefront in the video description under plant containers. And I'll drop a direct link in the video description as well. Now you may be wondering, you said that you were going to teach me how to grow more potatoes than ever before. And generally speaking, when you plant things in containers, you get smaller yields. Shouldn't I plant them in ground so I can get more potatoes? Well, when it comes to growing potatoes for most backyard gardeners, I think this is the best way to grow them. And here's why. If you're a gardener that has significant acreage and you have wonderful high quality soil and large plots for you to grow in ground, the best way to plant potatoes is probably to plant them in ground. But if you're like me and you live in a residential plot and you have to plant either in raised beds or in a small allotment, I think planting potatoes in ground creates a lot of problems. If you're growing your potatoes directly in ground in an earth bed, once the potatoes sprout and germinate and get to be about 12 inches tall or so, you're going to want to do something called hilling the potatoes, which is where you're going to go through the rows with either a wheel hoe or a manual hoe, and you're going to mound your soil up around the stems of the potatoes because they will continue to root along those stems, and then you will get more potatoes to grow along those roots. Hilling potatoes in a raised bed garden like I have just isn't realistic. The soil is already elevated and it's close to the tops of the beds. I've tried to hill corn before in a raised bed garden and it just didn't work. It was a nightmare and then when we would get our heavy rains, the beds would wash out. I'll never do it again. The other problem that you will run into harvesting potatoes when they're planted in ground is it is virtually impossible to harvest them all. Harvesting you'll have to do with some type of pitchfork, so not only will you probably damage some of the potatoes in the process, but you'll never harvest them all. And for years to come, those potatoes are going to keep sprouting in that exact location, and you're going to get little potato plants coming up ad 
infinitum. So for that reason, I don't like growing them in raised beds because of how invasive they can be. And you'll also tear up the raised bed garden completely trying to harvest them all. Because when you pull up the plants, you're going to take all of your raised bed soil with it. So it's a really destructive harvesting process. And finally, because potatoes are a nightshade, they are highly prone to diseases, especially late blight. So you need to rotate them. You can't plant them in the same location year after year. So if you're constantly planting potatoes around your garden, you're never going to harvest them all and you're going to have potatoes popping up everywhere all along your garden eventually. Growing them in containers simply eliminates all of those problems. Yes, it's true that you will get less yield per container because you won't be able to hill your potatoes in the container. However, it makes harvesting a breeze. When it comes time to harvest, you simply pick up your containers and you flip them over and you dump out all of the soil and you'll be able to harvest all of the potatoes. You won't have to worry about those potatoes getting damaged by pitchforks. You won't miss any of those potatoes in the process, so you'll get them all and you won't have to worry about spreading disease because you can simply use fresh soil mix for the new year. Hey buddy, you want a potato, don't you? You're my lawn potato. You're my lawn potato. And any yields that you lose per square foot by deciding to grow them in containers instead of in ground, you can simply just plant more containers. As long as you give your potatoes six hours of sunshine a day or longer, they will grow. So you can just take the containers and stick them strategically in corners of the yard that meet that sun requirement and you'll get more potatoes. The third tip to growing more potatoes than you ever have before is to grow only organic potatoes or seed potatoes from big box stores or seed stores or online seed websites. You can't just go to the grocery store and buy a conventional potato and plant it. And the reason why is because conventional potatoes are sprayed by a compound that inhibits the sprouting process so they can be stored for longer periods of time. If you simply go to a grocery store and you buy a conventional potato and plant it, there is a high degree of probability that that potato will rot underground before it ever sprouts and you will not get potato plants. If you decide that you want to go out and plant potatoes after watching this video, you have to plant only potatoes that were not sprayed by a sprout inhibiting compound. So they have to be either certified seed potatoes or organic because organic potatoes are not sprayed with the compound. So if you want to buy specialty or fancy potatoes, you either need to order them online from a seed supplier or you can go to your hardware store or big box store and want over to where they usually keep the tulip bulbs and the rooted cuttings by the seed stands. They usually will have seed potatoes this time of year, but you want to buy them as soon as possible while they're still fresh. If you don't care about growing fancy potato varieties and you just want to grow whatever you get at the grocery store, you can simply go and buy yourself organic potatoes and you can plant them. Once they are underground and they're kept moist, they generally will sprout very quickly. However, there is an exception to this rule. You can plant conventional potatoes if you have conventional potatoes that have already sprouted. That sprout inhibiting compound doesn't keep them from sprouting forever. It only delays the inevitable. So before I made this video, I checked my pantry and I had a bag of old russet potatoes that have been in there for over a month and they have already started sprouting. So for this video, I will be planting these conventional potatoes that have already sprouted. So once they actually sprout and they show this new green growth that you see right here, it is okay to plant them. You just can't plant them when they're fresh from the grocery store because chances are they will rot before they sprout. All of the potatoes that you see right here are russet potatoes from my pantry. They are all conventional and they have all sprouted very heavily. Now there's a debate when it comes to planting potatoes. Should I plant a whole potato like this or should I cut them up? And my answer to that question is it depends how well the potatoes are sprouting. You want to plant your potatoes so the sprouts are facing up. So with a potato like this, it's okay to plant the whole potato because it's very small and the sprouts will naturally grow up towards the sky from the ground. But potatoes like this, they were sprouting on the top and the bottom. So for that reason, I cut a lot of these in half. However, I cut them in half 48 hours ago, so the fresh cuts will heal over. 
This is like a callus right now. Generally, you don't want to plant your potatoes right after you cut them because if you do that, there's a chance that they could rot. This is a barrier for entry for bacteria and fungi to rot the potatoes. So I simply cut the potatoes and I let them sit on my counter for two days with the cut ends facing up. That way the ends could dry out and callus over. Now they are ready for planting. The fourth tip is to properly fertilize your potatoes for maximum production. Potatoes, like all nightshades, are very heavy feeders, but these may be one of the heaviest because potatoes form the tubers all along the roots, so they need a lot of food to supplement all of that activity. This is especially true when growing your potatoes in containers because the potato plants are confined to only the nutrients that are inside that container, so they can deplete very quickly, and I'm going to show you the best way to fertilize them. When planting our potatoes, we want to supplement them with two different fertilizers. The first fertilizer is going to be an organic all-purpose fertilizer. The bag on the right has an NPK of 533, but anything around a 555 or a 444 or something that's balanced where all three numbers are well represented will work just fine. Then on the left you see a bag of bone meal. Bone meal is a fantastic source of phosphorus and calcium. And since potatoes are a tuber that grows along a root, they benefit from a slow release source of phosphorus and calcium that will break down slowly all throughout the season. Earlier in the year, I showed you how to prepare a container garden. So these container gardens have already been prepped for my use this spring. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of this mulch. And now that all the mulch is removed, I'm going to remove six inches of this garden soil because we're going to plant our potatoes six inches deep. And this garden soil has already been amended with compost. Uh, I did this about two months ago. So in this video, I am not going to be adding any compost to my mix. However, if you have not added compost to your container garden, you can backfill the potatoes with compost after planting. Now that the potting soil has been removed to the appropriate depth, I'm going to sprinkle about one half cup of the organic all-purpose fertilizer in there, as well as about a quarter cup of the bone meal. And then we're going to lightly work it in to the garden soil. And now we are going to plant our potatoes with the sprouts facing up because the sprouts are the green growth basically. So we want to make sure that that's pointing up near the sky. Now I've probably spaced these potatoes about three inches apart each. Uh, I think this is probably good enough for this container. I don't want to overcrowd them. Now that they have been placed, I am going to put the garden soil back in. And remember this has already been amended with compost. If you have not amended your potatoes with compost, you can probably go ahead and backfill an entire six inches with compost if you wish. And the fifth and final thing we want to do is to place a two to three inch mulch layer on top of our potatoes. This is very important because potatoes need even soil moisture to grow best and nothing does that better than a mulch layer. In this case, I'm just going to dump the, the hardwood bark mulch that I already had on top of my containers right back on top. But if you haven't already pre-mulched your containers, you can use any natural mulch. It doesn't matter if it's hardwood bark mulch cypress mulch, pine bark nuggets, chopped up leaves, uh, weed-free, seed-free grass clippings, wheat straw, pine needles. Just don't use anything like rubber mulch or dyed mulch because rubber mulch is usually made out of old tires and other nasty industrial waste and dyed mulch is usually leftover lumber products that have been artificially dyed to appear like it's real wood, but really it could be contaminated construction supplies. And then the last thing we're going to do is water in our potatoes making sure not to overwater them. They should be lightly moist, but not sopping wet. Now, one more note about planting potatoes that you must know. It's very important that you plant your potatoes during dry weather. That's because before your potatoes root and sprout, they are very prone to rotting. So if you plant them in wet soil or you get very heavy rain before they have rooted and germinated and sprout through the ground, they may rot on you. So you want to make sure you check the forecast and plant them during a dry spell. If you get caught off guard and you do get 
heavy rain, you want to cover your containers with a tarp to keep all of that heavy rain off. This also goes for growers that are planting them directly in ground. They're prone to rotting at all times if they haven't yet rooted and sprouted. So you really want to make sure that you're aware of the weather and that you block any heavy rains that may be in the forecast from oversaturating your soil, or you could lose your potatoes. Now that the potatoes are planted, let's discuss ongoing fertilizing and frequency. Once the green growth breaks through the surface and the potato leaves get to be about four to six inches tall, you're going to want to start fertilizing your plants on roughly about a two week schedule. So every two weeks, I like to give them a water soluble fertilizer. And the reason why I like to use water soluble fertilizers is because these containers lack the microbiome to really fast and efficiently process the granulated organic fertilizers. They're inert in their granular form. Uh, it's not like an in-ground garden where they can break down the fertilizers more quickly. So these have already been processed. My favorite is a blend of Jack's 202020 fertilizer and Alaska Fish Emulsion 511. You mix them together and it's a great semi-conventional, semi-organic feed. Now if you want to stay completely organic and you don't want to use a product like this, you can stick with the fish emulsion and you can just give them another handful or two of the granulated organic on a two-week rotation schedule. I think you get a little bit better results using the water soluble fertilizers. They grow more quickly, but if you want to stay 100% organic, you can do this as well. Your potatoes will be ready for harvest when the green tops start turning yellowish brown and begin dying back. You don't want to wait until they have fully died back because then the potatoes tend to be too mature and they may start re-sprouting in the bags or in the soil. So once those green tops turn yellow and begin the dieback process, that's usually when you can harvest them. Since we're growing them in containers, all you're going to have to do is take the container, flip it over, and I suggest dumping it onto a tarp so you can easily collect all of the potatoes and reuse that soil to grow something that does not share a lineage with the nightshades and don't share any of the same diseases. How long it takes to harvest your potatoes will depend on your weather and what varieties you're growing. I'm growing a russet potato in there. They're one of the longer duration potatoes. They may take three months or so until I can harvest them. There are smaller potatoes that have shorter durations. And with those tips, you will be growing more potatoes than you ever have before. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or that I use in my garden in general, they will all be linked down below in my Amazon storefront. So expand that video description and click on the Amazon storefront for everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. And of course, if you have any questions, ask them down in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. We never have Dale in the guest room, and we've had the door open, and this is what I'm walking into right now. Dale, as long as you don't touch those stuffed animals, if you did that, you'd be in a lot of trouble. They are stuffed animals from mom and me from when we were little, little, little kids. Mommy's been working. She doesn't get home for another two days, so he's been Dale pressed. He gets bummed out when the whole family's not together. He's been a very good boy these last few days. He's a real sweetheart. So I guess I'll allow it and he can sit on the guest bed for a couple more nights until mommy gets home.